right, my friends. So for today's reading lesson, we're going to be reading Old and New. Sticking with our theme of past, present, and future, we're going to be looking back at some of the previous technology that people have used and comparing it to present day technology. We had decided before that people change the way they do things as they learn better and easier ways. So keep that in mind as we read Old and New. You will also be seeing some of our words with A-I-R, E-A-R, and A-R-E letter patterns in them. This first story is called Airplane by Anne Carey. An airplane is one kind of aircraft. A pilot flies it. An airplane has wings and an engine. So here we see the pilot and the wing of the airplane. Look at these aircraft. Which one is an airplane? So this one is clearly the airplane, right? This one is a helicopter. That one's a pretty new invention. And then this one is a hot air balloon. And that one is actually much older. That was developed before these two. Airplanes come in different sizes. Some have one pair of wings. Airplanes can even have three pairs of wings. How many pairs of wings does each of these airplanes have? So this one up top has just one pair, right? A pair means two of something. So we have the two wings here, that is one pair. This one right here has two pairs of wings. Here's one up top and then one down below it. And this one, oh my goodness, it has one, two, three pairs of wings. Wow. The Wright brothers were the first to fly an airplane. These are the Wright brothers right here. They made an airplane in 1903. The first flight lasted just 12 seconds. It was a short flight, but it was long enough. The Wright brothers had flown. Wow, so take a look at this old airplane. That was the first time humans were able to actually fly in a device they created. Airplanes were rare at first. Soon more people began to fly airplanes. People went to flying schools to learn how to fly. So here we have a very old picture of some pilots in an early airplane. And Bessie Coleman was actually an early pilot herself. How cool is that? In time, people started airlines. Passengers paid a fare to fly in an airplane. Flying was the fastest way to go places. So at first, the smaller airplanes could not carry that many people. But now, if you go to an airport and get on an airplane, you will be on that airplane with lots of people and they've all paid money for their ticket. Airplanes carried mail too. The US began its first airmail route in 1918. Airmail routes went from coast to coast. Trains also took mail from coast to coast, but airplanes were faster. So this is a picture of our country right here. Airplanes would be used to carry mail from one side of the country all the way over to the other. That is a long way. And here we have an early picture of an airmail carrier. That is awesome. A pilot's clothes have changed over time. Today's pilot wears different kinds of clothes from the pilot in the 1920s. So we see a 1920s pilot here, right? He's gotta have that heavy suit on because his airplane is not enclosed, it's all open, right? So he's gotta have the helmet, the goggles, a nice thick suit to protect his body. And now we see our pilot today. And this one happens to be wearing just a nice suit and tie. She's got her pilot hat tucked under her arm 
So she looks a lot more professional. That's not really made to withstand the elements when you're flying a plane. The Wright brothers had to lie down to fly their first airplane. Today, pilots can sit on a chair in the cockpit to fly an airplane. Would you dare to fly a plane? So here we see a picture of the inside of the pilot's cockpit in a more modern plane. They have all of their controls there. They're sitting upright in their seats, unlike the Wright brothers, right? So this is much more modern. And here we have a timeline of how airplanes have changed. So in 1903, the Wright brothers had their first flight. Then in 1910, the first airplane takes off from a ship. So a ship at sea. How awesome is that? In 1918, we have the first airmail flight. So that's when people were delivering mail on an airplane. And in 1919, we had the first passenger airplanes. That's when people can buy a ticket for a trip on an airplane. In 1927, the first nonstop flight over the Atlantic Ocean. And that's pretty significant because the Atlantic Ocean is really large. So the Wright brothers only flew for 12 seconds on their first flight. That would definitely not be long enough to fly over an ocean that size, right? So by this time, the technology had gotten so good that they could fly over an entire ocean. In 1937, we'd see the first jet engine made. That was a much more modern airplane. In 1951, the first passenger jet. So once again, people buying tickets to take this airplane ride. In 1961, the first space flights. So we went just from flying through the air that surrounds our Earth to flying outside of our Earth's atmosphere. That's amazing. And we managed to do all of that in just, what is that, 58 years? That's a pretty incredible change in our technology. Now we're going to read the story Each Year at the Farm by Sterling Spear and illustrated by Judy Love. Now this is a fictional story, but it's about the same idea, how our technology changes over time. Each year, my brother and I stay with Gran at her farm. We like to learn how the tools in the barn are used. My brother peers at a big tool. What is this tool? asks my brother. That is a plow, explains Gran. Horses pulled that plow in the old days, explains Gran. My dad sat on the seat. The blades of the plow turned the soil over. Then we would plant. And here you see a picture of how that old kind of plow was used. Back in that day, they had a bunch of horses that would pull it while the farmer sat in the seat. But these days, we don't really use horses for that kind of labor as much, right? We have engines that can do that now. Gran went on. Today, I use a tractor. I hitch a plow to the rear of the tractor. I use the steering wheel to steer. A tractor is faster than horses. And here we see a picture of that new plow, right, that Gran attached to the back of the tractor. And the tractor can do the work of all of those horses combined without any food or water, right? It's not a living thing, so it doesn't need that. It's a machine that's just built for work. So that's kind of helpful if you're a farmer these days, right? What is this tool, I ask? Those are shears for cutting wool off sheep, she tells me. I used those shears when I began shearing sheep. So you see here, got two blades, almost like a pair of scissors called shears that they would use to cut the hair off of sheep. 
Now I use these new clippers, Gran tells us. I hear that some people can shear a sheep in less than 100 seconds. Wow. So with this new electric clipper, Gran can just plug it in and quickly shave the sheep, right? She doesn't have to take the shears and cut all the wool off of its entire body. That would take a lot longer. So now that there's a faster, easier way, Gran's more likely to use that. What is that glass jar? asks my brother. I stand near the jar. The glass is clear. I see gears and a crank above the lid. That is a butter churn, Gran explains. We used it to make butter. We put cream in the jar. Next, we put the lid on the jar. Then we would turn the crank. The cream turned into butter. Wow, so this was the old way that people would make butter. That's pretty incredible. And you know what, there's even an older way than that. But yeah, so they would just put the cream in this little jar, screw the lid on and just turn the cream until it became butter. And that would probably take quite a while. Here's a picture of Gran using the butter churn in the past, right? We go into the house. Gran smiles. I made bread today. I even made butter. She has enough butter for us to smear on the bread. We like to stay with Gran.